It's essential to acknowledge that grief can coexist with professional responsibilities if done correctly. For example, you might dedicate a few minutes each day to reflect on your loss, perhaps writing down thoughts or feelings in a journal. It's important to remember that grief is a universal experience and as therapists, we are not immune to it. And by taking time each day to reflect on how you're doing, it's gonna better help you determine if you're okay to work or if you need other supports in place for you to be able to do your job. Welcome to the Colleague Down the Hall podcast. This episode is sponsored by the Collab Oasis Clinical Consultation Groups. Hi, I'm Janine Wolf, and I'm your colleague down the hall. I have a passion for helping fellow therapists get the clinical and collegial support we all need to do this work. And wow, it just keeps getting harder every day. I'm the founder and facilitator of the Collab Oasis Clinical Consultation Groups. I have been a social worker for almost 30 years, and I own a successful solo online private practice. More of us than ever are practicing in solo or online practices, and we all need colleagues to process cases with, commiserate with on those really hard days, and also to celebrate our successes with. In this podcast, I'll bring you insights about trends and changes in our field and sit down with amazing therapists who are doing amazing work. We'll discuss fictionalized cases, ways to practice sustainably, and of course, there will be plenty of laughing. I love laughing with friends. I'm so glad to have you as one of my colleagues down the hall. Hello, everyone. You are listening to another episode of the Colleague Down the Hall podcast. I'm your host, Janine Wolf, and today we're going to talk about a therapist's dual role managing grief during the holidays. As we enter the holiday season, a period often synonymous with joy and festivities, it's important to recognize that for many, it can also be a time of intensified grief. Today's episode is about exploring ways to manage grief during the holidays both for us as therapists dealing with personal loss and in our work with clients who are navigating their own grief. This topic is not only timely for me, but also deeply personal. My father died in November of 2022, and as we neared the first anniversary of his death, my brother-in-law died unexpectedly. So this podcast is dedicated to Dr. James Jacobs and Jeff Wolf, and I hope that these um, this information will be, will be supportive and helpful to you in your work and personal life. The holiday season is often portrayed as a time of joy, togetherness, and celebration. However, for those experiencing grief, it can amplify feelings of loss, loneliness, and sadness. As therapists, we not only face our own personal experiences of grief, but also encounter the grief of our clients. Managing this duality requires skill, empathy, and self-awareness. So let's start with talking about therapists managing their own personal grief. Grieving during the holidays can be particularly challenging when we're expected to be a source of strength and support for others. For those of us that work in private practice, we only get paid when we are seeing clients, so it can be difficult to make decisions about canceling sessions, decreasing our caseload, or how to manage our own emotions while supporting clients. And the bottom line is, if we're not okay to be supporting clients, we are not okay. After being in private practice for many years, I've developed a rule of thumb for myself. And that is, if I'm questioning whether or not I should cancel sessions for personal reasons, such as illness or grief, I use the question itself as a clue. If I am questioning it, I need to cancel some or all of my sessions. That's why it can be important to have a personal leave fund so you can continue to pay yourself when cancellations are necessary. But eventually, most of us will need to return to our work at some point. So I'm going to share some tips on how we can manage our own grief during this season or any season in which you are dealing with personal grief, as well as trying to do your very best work as a therapist. Tip one, recognize and honor your grief. Grief can often be sidelined in some professional settings, but as therapists, acknowledging our emotional state is crucial for authentic self-care and effective practice. Allow yourself to feel and express your grief. It's essential to acknowledge that grief can coexist with professional responsibilities if done correctly. For example, you might dedicate a few minutes each day to reflect on your loss, perhaps writing down thoughts or feelings in a journal. It's important to remember that grief is a universal experience, and as therapists, we are not immune to it. And by taking time each day to reflect on how you're doing, it's going to better help you determine if you're okay to work or if you need other supports in place for you to be able to do your job. 
Tip number two, set healthy boundaries. Setting boundaries is a form of self-respect and professional integrity. It ensures that we don't overextend ourselves while navigating personal grief. It's important to understand your emotional limits and respect them. This might mean reducing your caseload or being selective about the events that you attend this time of year. For example, you might decide to not accept new clients during the holidays to manage your workload and your grief. Every therapist has limits and it's normal to adjust workloads and social interactions during times of personal difficulty. And again, we need to think more carefully about this because it's not something most of us are trained in or feel especially good about doing because we know our clients rely on us. Tip three, seek support systems. Sharing your grief journey with trusted individuals can provide perspective, comfort, and validation. Lean on family, friends, or professional support groups. Sharing your experiences with others can provide comfort and understanding. For example, participate in a peer support group where therapists share their experiences of loss and coping strategies. Seeking support is a sign of strength, not weakness, and we know this as therapists. It's a common and necessary part of the grieving process and also crucial to the work we do. Tip four, maintain self-care practices. Self-care routines can anchor us during turbulent emotional periods and help maintain a semblance of normalcy. Prioritize activities that nourish your physical, emotional, and mental health, such as exercise, Exercise, hobbies, or meditation. For example, you might start your day with yoga or a walk to center yourself before sessions. Engaging in true forms of self-care is a widely recommended strategy for coping with grief and maintaining mental health. Tip five, create a ritual to remember. Rituals can provide a sense of connection to the loved one we've lost and can be particularly comforting during the holiday season. Honor your lost loved one with a special ritual or holiday traditions. For example, you might light a candle or visit a special place to feel connected to the person you lost. Many people find solace in rituals as a way to honor and remember those that we've lost, especially during significant times. Tip six, allow room for joy. Experiencing joy or happiness during grief doesn't diminish the depth of the loss, but it can be a critical aspect of the healing process. Remember that experiencing moments of joy or laughter does not diminish the love you had for the person who died. For example, enjoying a holiday movie or dinner with friends and acknowledging that it's okay to feel happy. Feeling moments of happiness is natural, though sometimes an unexpected part of grieving. Tip seven, express your feelings creatively. Creative expression can be a therapeutic outlet for emotions that are hard to articulate verbally. Engage in creative activities like painting or writing to process your grief. For example, creating artwork or poetry that reflects memories can be supportive. Many people experiencing grief find creative expression is a helpful tool in navigating their emotions. Tip eight, plan ahead for triggers. Anticipating and preparing for potential emotional triggers can help in maintaining intense feelings of grief, especially in unfamiliar or challenging situations. Anticipate situations that might trigger your grief and plan how to handle them. For example, if certain holiday songs evoke sadness, you might choose to play different waiting room music or plan a coping strategy for before or after sessions. Being proactive about potential triggers is a common coping mechanism used in grief counseling. Tip nine, educate others about your needs. Communicating your emotional needs to others can help manage expectations and foster a supportive environment. Communicate with family and friends about what you might need this season, whether it's space or company. For example, telling family members ahead of holiday gatherings about your preference for quieter, smaller get-togethers is absolutely okay. It's common for those in grief to require adjustments during this time of year or any time that's around the birthday or the anniversary or significant anniversaries of the person that they've lost. Tip 10, reflect on professional boundaries. Understanding how your personal grief intersects with your professional role is key to maintaining effective therapeutic relationships. Consider how your grief may impact your work and set boundaries accordingly to maintain professionalism. For example, you might choose to not discuss your grief with clients, which many of us wouldn't do anyway, but they might be aware that we have had something happen if we've had to cancel sessions. So we want to make sure that we are working on maintaining the focus of the client's need. Many therapists reassess their professional boundaries during personal crises to ensure they can continue to provide the best care to their clients. It's good to develop a succinct phrase to acknowledge words of care or concern by clients, but then move on into the session. Now let's turn our attention to working with clients who are experiencing grief during the holidays. And again, I'm going to give you 10 tips and some examples of how to use this tip effectively. 
Tip one, validate and normalize their grief. Validation and psychoeducation are fundamental therapeutic tools we use in our work. They assure clients that their feelings are understood and accepted. Help clients understand that it's normal to feel heightened grief during the holidays and that everyone's grieving process is unique. For example, reassuring a client that feeling sad or withdrawn during holiday celebrations is a normal part of grief. They also can have fun at some of these gatherings, and that is normal as well. Grief, particularly during the holidays, is common and a natural response to loss. Tip two, encourage clients to share memories. Sharing memories can be a powerful way for clients to maintain a connection to the loved ones they've lost. Invite clients to talk about and remember the person they've lost, as this can be healing. For example, ask clients to share a favorite holiday memory of their loved one. Many people find that sharing stories or memories is a comforting way to keep their loved one's memories alive. And as a therapist, it's important to remember to use the name of the person that has died. Most of the time when somebody has had someone that they love die, people avoid stating that person's name in front of them out of fear of upsetting them. But typically the opposite is actually true. Typically people want to know that others remember and can name specific stories or situations or even just remember that that person was alive and impacted their life in some way. Tip three, help clients plan for grief triggers. Identifying and preparing for potential triggers can empower clients to handle challenging situations more effectively. Assist clients in identifying potential grief triggers during the holidays and develop coping strategies. For example, if a client is dreading the first holiday without their loved one, discuss and plan how they might handle these moments. Help them develop a phrase that can be top of mind to address both those asking about their loss in a supportive way, as well as those asking about the loss inappropriately. Preparing for triggers is an important practice in managing grief and getting really concrete and nailed down about the specific phrases they'll use can be especially helpful at holidays or social gatherings. Tip four, suggest new traditions. New traditions can help clients redefine their holiday experiences in a way that honors their loss and their journey of healing. Encourage clients to create new holiday traditions that honor their lost loved one and their current emotional state. They might also want to consider still celebrating, but in a scaled down version, if that feels better to them. For example, a client might start a new tradition of volunteering or donating money in honor of their loved one's charitable spirit, or choose to still decorate their house, but in a minimal way. It can be helpful for those in grief to develop these new traditions as a way of coping and moving forward. And those traditions might be honored only this year, or it might be those traditions that get carried on for years to come. Tip five, recommend professional grief support. Additional support structures can provide specialized care and assistance during the grieving process. Suggest additional support resources like grief counseling or support groups if needed to support clients outside of their scheduled appointments and at times you may be out of the office. For example, referring a client to a grief support group for additional communal support or services held at this time of year, remembrance services are something that's commonly offered this time of year to remember loved ones. Seeking extended grief support is a helpful way for many to deal with intense or prolonged grief. Additionally, with support groups, many people find it therapeutic to be in contact with those in a similar experience. Tip six. Explore creative expression. Encouraging clients to express their grief creatively can provide an alternative avenue for processing their emotions. Encourage clients to use creative outlets such as music, art, or writing to process their grief. For example, suggest a client might, for example, suggesting a client write letters to their loved one or create a scrapbook of holiday memories might feel very therapeutic and supportive of them. This is an effective tool in grief therapy, as in so many other types of therapy that we provide. Tip six, discuss the role of self-care. Self-care strategies can help clients manage their emotional well-being and resilience during time of grief. Emphasize the importance of self-care and encourage clients to engage in activities that bring them comfort. Help them make a list of specific activities that they find supportive or nurturing. And let's make sure that we're not just leaning into the generic term of self-care, but we're really drilling down to help the client see specifically the things that can be supportive for their self-care. For example, encouraging a client to take walks or spend time in nature to find moments of peace. Focus on self-care is a key recommendation for anyone going through the grieving process when they are also more susceptible to illness and other physical manifestations. Tip eight, be mindful of cultural and personal differences. 
Grief is experienced differently across cultures and individuals. Being sensitive to these differences is crucial in providing empathetic care. Recognizing and respecting how cultural backgrounds and personal beliefs can influence a client's grieving process is important. For example, doing some work on your end to ensure understanding their grief and incorporating a client's cultural rituals or practices into their grieving process is important. Acknowledging and respecting cultural and personal differences in grief is important in all aspects of therapy. Tip nine, encourage connection. Encouraging clients to stay connected with supportive people can prevent feelings of isolation and loneliness. Encourage clients to seek support from friends, family, or other groups to avoid isolation. For example, try discussing with the client the benefits of spending time with supportive people during the holidays, as well as those they may, may wish to avoid during the holidays. Help them make a plan that they can implement when they are struggling. Tip 10, foster a sense of hope. Helping clients find a balance between mourning and looking forward can aid in their long-term healing journey. Help clients find a balance between honoring their grief and looking forward to the future. For example, guiding clients to set gentle intentions or goals for the new year that honor both their loss and their growth if they're ready for that. It can also be helpful to allow them to lean into their grief with an understanding that their life will go on in new and possibly good ways that they can't even imagine. Instilling a sense of hope and future orientation is something that we need to normalize for our clients when they're at a stage that they're ready to receive this. As we conclude today's episode, let's remember that grief, especially during the holidays, is a deeply personal journey, both for us as therapists and for the clients we serve. Approaching it with empathy, understanding, and patience is essential. The holidays, while challenging, can also be a time for healing, reflection, and meaningful connection. For everyone listening, there are new episodes of the Colleague Down the Hall podcast released every Thursday on all major platforms. Please remember, our work is hard, but it doesn't have to be lonely. Thank you so much for listening to the Colleague Down the Hall podcast. For show notes, links, and downloads, head over to colleaguedownthehall.com where you'll be able to learn more about getting the clinical support you need and resources to help you work in a supported, sustainable way. If you've enjoyed this episode, please share with your therapy friends and colleagues. Subscribe to the podcast. And if you love this episode, please leave a review.